A few months ago, I brought you the story of a man named Henrik Husby. He was sued by Apple in Norway as a repair shop owner that was having iPhone screens refurbished by a refurbisher in China. For those of you who are not very familiar with our industry, to give you a little bit of the rundown on how this works with iPhone screens, 90% of the time, what breaks is not the part that makes the picture. An iPhone screen is comprised of the LCD, that's the part that makes the image you see, a digitizer, that's the part that senses your touch when you touch the screen, and a glass layer that goes over it, that's the part that your finger actually physically touches. Most of the time, it's just the glass layer on the front that breaks when it's cracked, but the LCD and the digitizer are still in good condition and completely reusable. As a result of this, many will choose to have these screens refurbished and recycled so they're not wasted, and also because this guarantees that you get an original quality LCD screen with the same appearance as the original, because it is the original. It has been more and increasingly difficult to get access to original OEM quality screens, and as a result, this is one of the only ways that people can still get high quality LCDs that don't look like knockoff junk. So what he was doing is he was sending these screens or having a refurbisher in China refurbish them, and then he was receiving them back after they would have new glass layers put on the phone. Apple said that what he was doing here was counterfeiting because these screens still had an Apple logo on them, and they sued him. The reason I found this to be newsworthy is because I do not believe that refurbishing is counterfeiting. If I change the rotors on my bike's disc brakes, I don't have to remove the Schwinn logo from it. If you change the muffler in a Honda Accord with a different brand of muffler than what it came with, you don't have to strip off the Honda logo or lest the mechanic be accused of counterfeiting. This is not counterfeiting. This is what we call refurbishing. And you are able to refurbish something using a different part than what was in there and still be able to call it refurbished rather than calling it counterfeiting. For this to fly, we have to completely redefine refurbishing and remove several rungs from the what I call the ladder of refurbishing. In the ladder of refurbishing, at the top of it, I consider there to be manufacturer refurbishing. That's where the people in the company that actually manufacture the product refurbish it to whatever their specification is and put their stamp of approval on it. Next on that ladder is certified refurbishing, where it's not the manufacturer refurbishing it, but it's one of their certified repair or service facilities that's doing the refurbishing. The next rung on that ladder is third-party repair. And the manufacturer is not refurbishing it, but you do have a business that is licensed, bonded, insured, and experienced that is going to be doing the refurbishing. For example, I am not authorized by Apple, but I do have a business license, I am accountable to my customers, and I can have that license revoked if I do poor quality work. And the fourth type of refurbishing at the bottom of the ladder is going to be seller or owner refurbishing, where somebody who owns the product is trying to refurbish it on their own. What This could be whether it's somebody who's very experienced at refurbishing or whether it's somebody who doesn't even know their ass from their pee-pee bus. What Apple is doing here is they're pulling a sleight of hand. What they're doing is they're trying to trick you into believing that refurbishing is counterfeiting by completely removing two rungs from that ladder. Seller refurbishing and third-party refurbishing. What Apple's doing here is they're trying to abuse the power of the government, copyright law, intellectual property law, and customs to remove those two rungs from the refurbishing ladder, to now redefine third-party refurbishing and seller refurbishing as counterfeiting. And this is a precedent that will spread to other industries if it's something that we don't react to. Over the course of this case, not that it even matters, but Apple never even bothered trying to make the case that Henrik's refurbisher was using different quality glass. Now, I understand and I respect the argument from people who are going to say that a lot of people in these crappy mall iPhone screen repair shops use garbage parts, they claim they're original, and they put junk in your phone that looks like and works like shit. I respect people who are, and I respect the argument that I'm just so sick and tired of those people that if Apple does something about it and goes after refurbishers, yeah. However, in my opinion, this is not the way to do it. The way to fix that is to use technology, to use the great communication tools in the internet that we have in front of us, to create some sort of wiki, some sort of database, some sort of objective standard, some way of rating the, the, the parts that are sold by all of these sellers, some way of comparing image quality, of comparing how they work, of having the repair community and customers come together and point out what is good and what is garbage and why with an objective standard. Here's an LCD that looks identical to the original. 
original. Here is an LCD that falls, falls apart, and so on and so forth. This is something that we can do ourselves without allowing Apple to redefine third-party and seller refurbishing as counterfeiting and thus illegal. It's not actually going to fix the underlying issue, which is that both consumers and repair shops want some way to know when they're purchasing something, if they're purchasing something of quality, or if they're purchasing junk. That's a problem that we can solve without allowing Apple to abuse the power of the state to redefine refurbishing as counterfeiting by using intellectual property and copyright laws in a manner that they were never intended to be used when they came out. I bet my kitty cat Blackberry that when copyright and intellectual property law came out, the individuals writing and drawing up these, this legislation never intended for it to be used so that repairing your own products could be considered against the law. This is an abuse, and this has to end. Why am I going over this now if Henrik won his case? Apple filed an appeal, and they were granted their appeal. In June of 2019, this case is going to be revisited. Even if you don't care about Henrik Husby, even if you don't care about our industry, this is an important case because if Apple wins, they will be able to redefine repair and refurbishing as something that is actually illegal. Your very concept of ownership will be changed if this case is won in Norway because this is going to spread to other countries and to other industries. If you want to simply take a broken piece of glass off of something that you own and put another piece of glass on and then say that this is now a refurbished part or a refurbished device, you will not be allowed to do so without being called a counterfeiter because you are still calling it the device that it was when you purchased it before you broke it. And that is quite dangerous. This is why I'm supporting Henrik Kuzby, and I'm hoping that you will too. I'm going to be traveling to Norway in June of 2019. I would like to cover this case. If possible, I would like to live stream the case. I would like to be able to live stream what goes on in the court. And I'd like to, if possible, have a live translator so that everybody can see exactly what type of arguments Apple's going to be making. I would like to be there to cover this, and I hope that you'll be there to watch. Let's go over another story that I discussed a few months ago, whereby if you replaced your iPhone screen with an aftermarket screen, it would stop working when you updated the operating system. I talked about this, where you could have a phone, crack screen, replace the screen, works great, and then you update to a new operating system, and that phone that had been working fine for months before will now no longer have a working touchscreen. A lot of people said that I was paranoid about this, that I was wrong when I insinuated sinister motives on the part of Apple trying to curb independent or third-party repair by making sure that aftermarket parts don't work, that it was wrong, that maybe Apple wasn't trying to make it so that if you replace the screen it doesn't work. They weren't trying to curb third-party repair. Take a look at the new MacBook. With the new MacBook, if you replace parts of its top case, its screen, with another screen, or another top case, even if these were original, authentic Apple parts, it will not boot unless you run a special tool that only Apple has access to. Only if you bend the knee and kiss the ring will Apple allow the screen that you've replaced in your own device to function. And we are no longer talking about protecting users from knockoff or third-party parts, because you could take that screen from another MacBook, change it into your current MacBook, and it won't work without booting with Apple's special tool. And we're no longer talking about security or Touch ID because a lot of people were saying, well, it makes sense that you can't change the home button because th th that's the thing that uh, for Touch ID so that I could get into my Chase Bank and my PayPal app and security, security. But you don't log into your laptop using the LCD screen. You don't put your hand on the LCD screen and then get access to the machine. You understand, this is not about security. This has never been about security. This is about control. This is about turning up the temperature of the water in the pot just slowly enough that by the time your rights of ownership and rights of repair and rights of personal property have evaporated into thin air, you barely notice. And it's not paranoia. If you just look over their actions over the past four to five years, you can see where it started and where it's going and each one of the steps along the way whether it's from 2015, when they took away the diagnostics from the computer that would tell you which sensor failed and replaced it with a diagnostic that would say, something's wrong, 
Go to an Apple store. Or when they changed up the Apple service diagnostic from a tool that could be distributed on a flash disk to a tool that you had to prove you were an Apple authorized service provider to even get access to to be able to run that test. Or if we were to look over to the, when they started gluing in batteries versus screwing in batteries like they do on the Air, which by the way is their thinnest machine, which means it was not done to keep the machine thinner. Or if we look at things like soldering the solid state drive into the computer so that you cannot get access to your data if something occurs for virtually no improvement in performance. Or if we look at something like them blacklisting EDID codes of certain LCDs, so that the LCD screens that I've been using for A1502 Retina MacBooks for the last several years just magically stop working if you update to the latest operating system where they decided that these LG parts that are the same as the LG parts that they're putting in the computer no longer work because they don't have the blessing of Apple in their EDID code. Now, this is not a question of becoming an Apple authorized service facility because as I've gone over several times and as you can see in this video that is well indexed has a good table of contents where you can listen to each individual conversation I have with Apple authorized service providers Apple authorized service providers in many cases are not allowed to fix things they cannot even replace a $5 part with a headphone jack that Jess's 11 year old kid was able to do in 20 minutes without messing up the phone they are glorified mailing and shipping centers they send the product to a depot they tell the customer they have to wait two weeks and get it back it is not a viable business model for anybody that is interested in actually providing repair this has been part of a pattern that has been going on for many years. And this is, this is not something that should come as a surprise to anybody who's been watching all along the way. Why would you voluntarily give your money to a company that's trying to redefine refurbishing, personal property, and repair at the expense of your freedom using any means necessary? At best, it's going to be some sort of roadblock that requires cracking their tools so that you could do something as basic as replace your own screen with another genuine one. At worst, it's going to be something where you have issues with the legal system as a result of trying to repair your own or somebody else's property. This is not something that I think a lot of people, even diehard Apple users, are going to support. And the thing that's really dangerous here is that other companies look to Apple to figure out what they should be doing to be profitable and successful, and more importantly, what it is they can get away with. Other companies are too stupid to copy the things that make Apple great. They're not going to copy the fact that they have real stores. They're not going to copy the fact that the products come in nice packaging or that they're user-friendly and intuitive to people who don't know a lot about computers, that they were used to be rock solid and stable for professional video and audio recording applications, that they have amazing trackpads that beat everything in the PC landscape. Other companies don't copy the things that make Apple great. They copy the things that make Apple suck. They copy gluing in the battery. They copy gluing in the SSD, uh, soldering in the SSD. They copy not having an SD card slot. They copy not having a headphone jack. They copy the notch. They copy the things that make Apple suck. And if Apple is able to continue to make record profits while designing devices in the open and also arguing within the open legal system about how they want to destroy the very concept of third party and seller refurbishing and they continue to make money well you can just kiss your freedom goodbye and this is something that should concern you regardless of the industry you're in and regardless of what you think of iPhone and MacBook repair as a business if you care about personal property ownership and repair. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'd actually really like to buy a couple of these just to be able to confirm all this stuff and see just how nitty gritty it gets. You know, are, is it that you have to replace the entire assembly, just the screen to trigger this? Will just a keyboard trigger it or a whole top case trigger it? But um, I've, yeah, my, my basement got flooded and I lost about 10,000 bucks of inventory. So I'm not exactly keen on uh, buying the latest MacBook Pro, but it's something that I may just do just so that I can test this out because I don't think people are going to believe it until they see it for themselves. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right, in the time it took for my potato of a computer to render this video, Kyle at iFixit actually tried to replace the screen and some of the parts in a, one of those new MacBooks with the T2 chip, and it managed to continue working, which begs the question as to why it is Apple's own internal documentation delivered to their own server centers said that a device will not boot if this is not followed. 
does make me wonder if this is something that's going to happen in a later operating system update, or if maybe it was just a fluke with the machine that Kyle had, or maybe, I don't know, maybe these documents weren't actually correct. But it does, I don't know, it does beg the question, and it does make me wonder if this is something that is still going to happen in the future. Again, I do have about 80 or 100 screens in the other room that at this point in time are completely useless due to an update in Apple's operating system that will not allow these original LG screens that are the same as what Apple is putting in their computers to function due to the fact that their ADID code is slightly different. And um, I don't know. You, you tell me what you think of all this stuff. But uh, I would absolutely positively not be surprised if several weeks in or several months in, if this winds up being the case and you are unable to replace these parts on these machines without getting into serious issues. So, uh, yep, I'm going to re re-render and re-upload this at the at the Time Warner speed. And, uh, well, you're probably going to see this like five days after the iFixit thing came out with the speed of my internet. But ah, see you in the next one.